Okay. Um, uh, right now, we're going to get into uh, to a, a, just a very interesting and uh, and fun uh, lesson here. We're going to do advanced steel bends, and we're going to do some three note bends, maybe even some four note bends. And uh, the focus here is going to be staying in tune, uh, staying in time when we when we utilize these back uh, backing tracks. Uh, we're going to do some volume swell steel bends, um, maybe. Um, you know, uh, looking at some of that, and then uh, just being able to see the chords that are are, are the foundation of these bends, uh, and I'll explain that too in more detail. So um, I'm gonna I'm, I'll show you the chord position they come out of. We'll we'll do the steel bends, and then um, then we'll move on to uh, hearing how, what these sound like in uh, in some backing tracks. So um, you know what? Let's use D. Let's use D right now. Uh, for these examples and um, and some of these techniques here. So um, what I'll do is I'll start out with uh, with some pretty common three note kind of country bends, and then we'll move we'll move through kind of all the stuff. And I might repeat a few things that I did uh, in previous lessons and just kind of pick those apart even more here. So um, let's just jump right in. So uh, I know one of these I did earlier, but I'm going to do it again. It's just uh, just to be thorough. It's out of this this uh, this one over three shape, the Hendrix shape that I've been talking about, and it's utilizing this shape, which is the A shape in D. And all we're going to do is we're going to bar these two notes of the of the D chord with our little finger, and then we're going to bend the E note up to the major third of D, which is um, uh, F sharp. So we're gonna go, we're gonna, and we're gonna rake backwards with our pick. So we're gonna go. So it's down. Actually, let's do that. Let's, instead of raking, let's go uh, upstroke, and then a downstroke on the G string. And then while that's up, bent up, we're going to bend down again, or let this release rather. So we're going to go up, and then we're going to hit the two strings, and then resolve on D. So that lick goes like this. You can tell that sounds pretty in tune uh, because I'm using my ring finger as this mechanism that we've talked about in the past. And it just goes right up. So that's that, that bend. Now with that shape, you can do these little rakes too, where you do where you do rake it to make it sound sound a little bit more like a pedal steel's uh, player's roll. So you can go, or you can go, uh, there's two different techniques you can use for that. You can also grip all three of these three of these like a piano and hit all the strings together. So there's really three different techniques the way you can do that. And now what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to look at D7, which is this shape, and then we're going to we're going to look at that D7 right there with this um, this note on C, which makes that chord, and that's D7. So what we're going to do is right now we're going to take um, let's take our, our, this is the easiest way to do this, let's take our little finger and put it on the A string. We're still working out of this position, we're just looking at D7. So we're going to put the little finger on the A string, the ring, the, the first finger is going to go on the C on the high um, E string, and then we're going to push up with the middle finger on the on the the eastern we're going to do the same bend as we did before except we're going to be triggering that flat 7 to to go from this sound to this sound
So that's the sound we're going for there. And you can, what's the hard part about this is getting this, this, getting this middle finger not to do this. Where you're hitting, where your nail is catching that D string. So you want to either try to get under it or just push it up with. Now my nail got a long, little long there on this finger, so it's kind of having a hard time, but. So there's that. And you can rake, or you can, or you can pop this. So that's a great bend, you know. And then uh, we're gonna move up from that. Now we're gonna move up to the to the D bar chord shape. Same kind of situation. We're gonna go um, same concept here but we're gonna move it up to the minor third and do like a bluesier style. And sometimes I'll find, uh, depending on what position I'm in, sometimes it's easier to bend. Uh, okay, hold this down with your the uh, C note with your little finger and you can bend with this ring finger but you can also bend, sometimes it's easier to get this tighter up and, and get a little bit more power and a little bit more um, leverage with your middle finger. And I'll release onto the major third sometimes too, so. Instead of. So if you do, you can bend that a little bit too. So um, that's that bend. A little bluesier. Now the three note bend is to, well actually it's a three string bend, it's not a three note, we're not bending three notes, we're bending only one note on both of these. But it is three note, uh, three strings. So we're gonna hold the first, uh, first finger down on the high uh, E string on the D note. We're gonna play the flat seven C and we're gonna bend from G to A. So we're gonna bend. And that can be raked or picked or plucked. And now, uh, same concept, we're gonna bend up and then bend down. So while that's up there, You can also end this one on the major third too, like. So these, these bends really work well together. So here's that what that would sound like. And this bend here, that is not easy. It is, a, that is compli that's complicated. Uh, and it's not the notes that are complicated, it's getting that middle finger to. because you'll see with this bend, it's the only one that we're gonna do probably that doesn't have a reinforcement behind it. That one's reinforced, this one. That one's reinforced, these, all the, these are all reinforced. This one, no reinforcement there. So that middle finger really has to, uh, has to work well there. And that, that's gonna take some practice, but just do it and, um, and you'll get it.